Thank you, everybody, to uh, coming to the Commercial Street Operations and Master Plan Public Forum. Uh, it, my name is Bill Needleman. I am the Waterfront Coordinator with the City in the Economic Development Department. Um, it was December that we convened in this room to talk about existing conditions and the problems in the corridor. And I'm really gratified that we have so many uh, return participants uh, as well as new participants to come and talk about possible solutions. Uh, we have our consulting team here, we have city staff here uh, to take us through a process to evaluate some alternatives. Uh, first of all, I would like to know that we've got quite a few um, members of city staff here. We're not going to ask them all to introduce themselves, but if you'd all please raise your hands. And uh, you know, so if you see city staff, please do feel free to reach out to them and ask them questions. We, I know we also have some elected officials in the room. I saw uh, Councillor Mavadonis is here. We had Representative Collins who is here. Are there any other elected officials in the room that I wouldn't want to miss? There, thank you. Um, I will leave it to the consulting team to introduce themselves when I hand over the mic to them. Um, but in terms of framing what we're going to do tonight, we are essentially looking for feedback on four basic groups of alternatives or solutions, selections of all solutions. We have them labeled one, two, and three options. But on top of those is a set of interventions, changes, improvements that lie underneath each one of them. So make sure you know and are aware of what's common to each concept. And then there are three concepts that are organized by travel time and reliability, access to the piers and wharves, and multimodal transportation and accessibility, transit, bikes, and pedestrians. This is not to say that these concepts or collections of concepts are a set that is immutable. We fully anticipate at the end of this process having one preferred alternative that may have elements of all of these, but it's an opportunity to organize the thinking around solutions to frame this conversation. So when you look at particular items such as the center lane of Commercial Street, parking decisions, use of the corridor. Understand that you should think about how they may be reassembled into that one preferred alternative and make your comments or use your votes um, accordingly. Um, so I am going to turn it over to the consulting team uh, to take us through this process, and I greatly look forward to seeing both the conversation and the results. Hi everyone, my name is Philip Cherry. I'm a, a traffic engineer, transportation engineer with WSP. Uh, Ned Codd is also here with us. He's sitting in the front. He's with our team as well. And then we have uh, Jane LaFleur with us from uh, her consulting firm. And we're going to uh, walk you through the presentation today. There's going to be a number of opportunities for feedback. Uh, you have your, your keypad polling that Jane will, will walk you through how to use those. And then there's also opportunities for feedback. You have written comment forms. Uh, you see the uh, larger posted plots around the room where you can put sticky notes afterwards. So we have a number of opportunities for guided feedback uh, today when we're, when we're going through this presentation and, and looking forward to a briefing on what we've updated. Uh, Jane's going to start us off here. Great. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Uh, I want to run through a few slides and then you're going to have an opportunity to vote. But before we start, does everyone have a keypad polling device? Bruce has them if you need one. Okay. You should only have one, not two. Okay. Great. So this is what we're going to do tonight. We'll be talking about the goals of this project the issues and opportunities that you folks have told us over the last several months. We'll talk about the previous outreach that we did uh, over the last months. We'll hear feedback from you on your priorities for the corridor. We'll talk about the different descriptions and concepts, and then we'll ask you for feedback on those. And then we'll have discussion and adjourn. 
And as Bill mentioned, there'll be uh, time to go around the room, leave us sticky notes, leave us comments. And also, if you picked up a packet, there's a comment card that you can leave with us, and there's pencils in the back if you don't have one. So our project goals are safety for all users. Also, to maintain and improve access and safety for the working waterfront operations. And finally, to improve the traffic operations and address congestion points and bottlenecks. So as, as, we, as we move forward and we look at the concepts we've developed, we first just want to pause and sort of refresh and look at some of the existing issues. Uh, we went over some of these with you uh, several months ago when we were in this room, but just as a refresher, looking at some of these issues, travel time and then travel time reliability. For those who aren't maybe aware of the difference between the two, travel time is, is how long it takes to go up and down this corridor. The reliability issue is, you know, one day it may take you four or five minutes to go from Franklin Street to Beach Street. If the next day it takes you 10 and the next day it takes you two, it's very hard to, to trip plan um, when there's, there's that lack of reliability there. Uh, the next is a safe, organized working waterfront. We want to make sure that uh, it's, it's easy for, for the trucks and users and employees to access that waterfront and then when those trucks and, and operations are leaving that they're staged and managed in an orderly fashion so that it's, it's safe for everyone using the corridor. Uh, there's also relatively limited waterfront access at certain times um, for, for pedestrians and really all users. We want to make sure that the, the waterfront is enjoyable by, by everyone. That was, that was a lot of the feedback we got when we were in this room. Uh, we met in different tables. And then there's a lot of sort of chaotic pedestrian crossings, uh, both at signalized and unsignalized intersections. Uh, there's very high crosswalk density, especially during peak, uh, peak season. There's a lot of people crossing um, throughout the corridor. We want to try to manage that and make it a little bit safer for pedestrians and a little bit more organized for, for everyone else using the corridor. We also broke this out sort of into two separate sections. We felt that the western part of the corridor, uh, roughly from Beach Street towards High Street, Center Street, was a little bit different character area than the eastern part of the corridor. And so as we were developing solutions, we thought it was important to look at those individually. So the western part of the corridor, we know the Beach Street signal uh, intersection, there's a lot of queuing, a lot of delays. Uh, there's been some improvements made in the last few months that we'll touch on, but uh, we know that is a bottleneck. Uh, there's a lot of industrial uses, truck staging and loading sort of on that truck apron in the wharf area just east of the uh, Casco Bay Bridge. And while that's obviously necessary and a part of Portland, uh, how do we manage that to make it a little bit safer, a little bit more organized? Another issue we saw was parking demands near the Gulf of Maine Research Institute. Uh, there's all that angle parking. How do we make sure there's available parking where people can park the time they, they need to, but also enough turnover so that you don't have other folks circling constantly to find parking. Uh, one, one other issue in this corridor is that when traffic volumes are lower, uh, speeds are a little bit higher, and that can make it feel unsafe for, for pedestrians to cross if you're walking across from, say, the Harbor View Park, or if you're a cyclist in this area. So how do we make that, that higher speed corridor safer for all users? and then uh, accommodating traffic from those planned developments, like the one going in near uh, High Street on the, on the land side, is something we'll also accommodate. As we move to the eastern part of the corridor, we look and say, again, pedestrian crossings are critical. How do we make sure that they're accommodated safely? Uh, this is, we've touched on this already a little bit, but there's, there's some uh, sight distance concerns. You have uh, delivery vehicles that are often parking close to crosswalks that make it difficult to see beyond those vehicles. Uh, certain crosswalks, you also have parked vehicles that are very close to the crosswalk. It makes it difficult, especially for children, to see across that parked vehicle to, to safely cross. Uh, how do we manage those deliveries, vehicles where they're parking along the corridor? How do we make sure they're, if they are parking in the center turn lane, how do we make sure they're doing it in a safe, organized manner? Parking is also a concern here, especially in peak season. How do we manage that? Travel time reliability, there's a lot of different users. Uh, trucks, cyclists, pedestrians, trolleys, ev everybody's using this corridor. Uh, at Custom House Wharf, you have the bait truck backing movements that can be uh, unexpected for those who aren't from town and, and still a concern, you know, safety concern for anyone. We want to make sure those are as managed as well as possible. And then there's a commercial street at Franklin Street, which we know has a lot of intersection delays and queuing. And we're going to touch on that on the next slide here. Uh, 
we'll just give it its own slide, but we know that it has long waits for pedestrian times and vehicles. There's long crosswalks for pedestrians. And we want to make sure that we can find a solution that, that accommodates those uh, and would potentially even provide more of a waterfront gateway. When you come in from 295, you go down Franklin Street, you arrive at Commercial Street, it's sort of the heart of the corridor. How do you make it a little bit more appealing to announce as a gateway that we're here and provide a little bit more plaza space um, around that intersection? You have passengers coming from cruise ships, from the ferry, and they're maybe deciding where they're going to go. And so when they're queuing and congregating in that area, how do you provide a little bit more uh, storage and, and waiting space? And then, so over the past uh, couple years with the Franklin Street Corridor study, we did look at a potential roundabout option. The city's looked at that. And then through this study, we've looked at a potential uh, sort of revamped signal option where we would realign uh, Franklin Street. And through that realignment, you would be able to gain significant signal efficiencies uh, reduce the size of the intersection a little bit, reduce those crossing times, et cetera. So just to review the previous outreach, uh, in October of last year, there was a stakeholder meeting down at the ferry uh, terminal. And in December, we had a public meeting right in this room. How many of you were at that December meeting or the October meeting? A good number of you, great, okay. Um, we have also continued outreach uh, through Bill and, and city staff to the waterfront stakeholders, including the Working Waterfront Alliance and the Waterfront Working Group. At the October stakeholder meeting, um, we asked people what works well, what doesn't work, and what are your ideas? So economic development was one of the highest that is working well. And uh, fish deliveries are working fairly well, vehicle operations fairly well. Uh, what doesn't work are pedestrian operations, um, parking in some cases, pretty high scores for snow maintenance and, and some for safety. And then we received lots of ideas in all of these categories. In December, we heard lots of priorities from you folks. If you were here, you remember you were in small groups, and then we tallied what you said in your groups and brought them all together as a big group. Um, we heard that you wanted to enhance multimodal access to support a vibrant working waterfront, commercial fishing, and waterfront truck access, enhance the residential quality of life, reduce vehic vehicular traffic, improve access for pedestrians and bicyclists, prioritize marine development, and manage access and the impacts of development. We also asked what your 10-year vision was. What would you like Commercial Street Corridor to be in, like in 10 years? And you told us better multimodal access, a world-class sustainable waterfront, authentic water views with public access, a harbor walk with public access to the water, a strong fishing industry, having it functional for trucks and water access for commercial fishing. So we want to stop here briefly for five minutes or less to say, is there something we missed? Is there anything you want to add to those, to those priorities or those issues? Just have a moment, if anybody from the audience? Yes, sir. Is anything being done to reduce the number of vehicles on our commercial street? Anything done at this moment, Bruce I don't, or Bill, I don't know if, if you guys want to weigh in as well. Um, through this project, we're, we're looking at a number of different options that would potentially reduce the number of vehicles that would need to access that. A couple of, uh, two of the concepts we're looking at do look at different transit options that would allow folks from within the community to access Commercial Street via transit which would reduce the number of uh, vehicles that need to park there. And then there's other options that improve uh, bicycle infrastructure, which is another means that, that folks from outside of Commercial Street could access there and reduce the parking demand. I don't know if there's any other, other plans immediately underway, but, but certainly within our concepts, that, that's two different ways that we're trying to reduce the number of vehicles that need to park right on the corridor or, or drive along the corridor. Related to that, did you also look at how to change uh, the timing of which parking garage is empty because that's a huge problem of everybody emptying out at the same time? To, to clarify, you're asking when folks are getting off work, when they're leaving garages, or any sort of pricing or other 
parking policy with the garage itself. Yeah, is there any way out of the building that's been done nationally to encourage a dispersal of when people leave work so that they don't all come out at the same time? Maybe that's not possible. Uh, that's not something we've looked at specifically for this corridor. I don't know if anybody in the room knows anything broader in, in Portland that you can, can weigh in on. Um, Bruce or anybody else, but sure. As we've been looking at develop, larger development projects, such as uh, some of them on the eastern waterfront, we have been requiring transportation demand management plans for those larger employees, and so staggered work hours are uh, a part that we ask them to look at as part of their managing their you know the, the work days of their employers, and so we have had some uh, input in response to that request. And that's one of the strategies that is required for them to uh, at least consider for their, for their workforce. Are you getting anywhere with that, please? We have uh, seen, for instance, on some of, the, some of the plans in the eastern waterfront, uh, telecommuting is being, being offered to several of the, uh, several of the employers there. Uh, we have, uh, there's just new opened uh, businesses, so they haven't really done any monitoring or reporting back of their efforts yet, but those are uh, parts, of the, parts of their transportation demand management plans. Other questions? Yes, sir. Did you look at the section of commercial from Beach Street to Veterans Bridge, particularly in regard to linking up bike lanes, but just in general? Beach Street to Veterans Bridge to South Portland. This so uh, west of the Beach Street ramp and the International Marine Terminal, we do have uh, design plans underway for uh, to extend the shared use pathway that currently ends near Benny's. Uh, to uh, we're looking for that to be implemented to. Uh, the Star Match building in the next two years, and then we do have concept plans to extend that east of the Star Match building. Uh, we look for that in a couple of years to follow. We're also looking for, to continue the bike lanes uh, west of uh, Star Match, and for instance, uh, to connect to the Veterans Bridge, and uh, so folks can either choose the shared use pathway on the Veterans Bridge or or use the shoulders on the Veterans Bridge and it also connects to the Four River Parkway pathway. So, yes. This one? Oh, yes, you. Oh, has it occurred to any of you working on this plan to have a more coherent vision about why there is so much traffic in, in answer to the gentleman's question of get, getting the cars off Commercial Street? Is it possible that with the proper development and the proper access to stores and merchandise that many of us wouldn't have to get in our cars and traffic on Commercial Street? I think, I think a lot of this study did look at alternate ways to, to access Commercial Street. Um, and, and even when options of when folks are coming in, say from out of town, putting up signage to direct them to specific parking facilities so that they're not parking right on per Commercial Street. If you're, if you're driving in from out of town, it's a little bit more difficult to, to take transit or some other option, but at least routing those folks to an appropriate location. And then, and then as I mentioned, uh, that as, as we'll show, there is a significant, uh, both concepts one and three uh, that we show here have some transit service and then uh, there are bike facilities or a shared use path of some sort in, in each of these to try to try to mitigate that uh, demand for, for parking on the corridor. If you can hold your question, um, we're going to proceed and there'll be another discussion period in a few minutes, but I want to make sure we keep rolling along if that's okay. Okay? Okay. So now we want to have you respond to a number of questions and these priorities. So you'll be doing electronic keypad polling. Then there'll be some self-guided feedback where you can go to any one of these maps around the room and leave a sticky note with comments. And then there are comment forms. So there are at least three opportunities to give us feedback. So our f I want to walk through with a sample question before we get to the meat of the evening. Uh, asking you who's in the room. And this is how you use your keypad. 
Hold it so the string is at the bottom. If you hold it this way, it's upside down. Okay? And the question is, who is in the room? And you'll, it's like, who wants to be a millionaire, where they ask the audience and it's immediate response, if you've ever seen that TV show. So the numbers go one, two, three across the top, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And there's eight options. So press one if you are in the fishing or fisheries industry, two if you're with government or education, three, hospitality industry, four, the nonprofit world, five, property owner, six, a resident or neighbor, seven, retail and office, and eight is other. Now, just a couple of rules. I see that a lot of you have already voted, but if you change your mind, or if you're in multiple, you could answer multiples, you can press as many as you want, but it only takes your last vote. So pick the one that's most prevalent. If you change your mind and say, gee, I'm in the nonprofit, but I'm really in the fisheries or whatever, you can change your mind until I say last call or last vote. And then um, the receiver is up here, so don't play, aim it at me. If you feel like you have to aim it, like a clicker on the TV, aim it right here. We've tested this from the far corners of the room and even behind this post, so it should definitely work. We know it does. So over 60 people have voted so far. I'm not going to vote. Any more votes? Property owners in Portland. Okay. So anybody? Oh, the other thing is uh, if you have the kind that has a screen, your vote should show in the screen. If for some reason you get the circle with a hash through it, that means your vote was not taken. I've tested every single keypad. I know they're all working, but every once in a while somebody says mine's not working. So if you want to swap it out for a different one, Bruce will bring you a new one. So go ahead, last chance. Any more votes? Here we go. So most of you are residents or neighbors followed by property owners. The fishing industry is the, the third most prevalent group in the room today. Okay? So that's how they work. Okay. So we're going to ask you a series, I think it's five questions. We know you haven't heard all the details of the design, but this is high level questions of how you would prioritize each of these features. So this question is, how would you prioritize marking specific areas for marine or fishing vehicles to stage or load? Either on the street or, uh, you know, with, within the right-of-way. So I think a lot of where we're thinking is, is near uh, the area sort of west of Park Street, east of the Casco Bay Bridge there, but uh, anywhere along the right-of-way uh, is where we're thinking. And, and just to clarify, obviously one is the highest priority, three is sort of middle neutral priority and, and five is the lowest priority. Yes, you can push one, two, three, four, or five, question. Does this, does this question mean that, that the city would designate spots and that there would not be other options? Or are you just saying that that would be, that you would, that they would mark that space as appropriate for that use and to not be used by other user groups? It's not getting into that amount of detail yet. It's asking you how important is this to your view of the corridor, okay? We're not saying A versus B. We just want to know how important is staging and loading for marine and fishing, okay? Any, any more votes? Sometimes it's not always the same. Make sure your vote went through. Any, was there another comment? Okay. So one is very high priority. Five is very low, and you can pick anything in between. Last chance. Any more votes? Here we go. So it's very high, and then everything above that. So 32, 30, and 27 percent said it's at, at least middle or above. I'm just curious for people that said very low priority, if you are interested in speaking up, anybody want to tell me why? Or do you feel outnumbered? Yeah. <laughs> just, just, I might ask that a few times if you want to tell us because every once in a while we, you know, we're really curious on why. You know why we think it's a high priority? No. Because no. it's pretty overwhelming. Yeah. 
Okay, great. The next question is, how would you prioritize improve pedestrian safety and access along and across the corridor? Same options, one is very high, five is very low. Do you want to add anything? It's pretty clear. Pretty, pretty, pretty clear. Okay, this is your priority, you're voting fast. I can see people voting up in the top right corner. Go ahead and vote. If you change your mind, you can still change your mind and push a different button. If you push anything other than one through five, you'll get the, the, the zero. Okay, last chance. Make sure it registered in the screen or the green light beep. That means your vote was taken. Don't hold it under a metal chair either. That can interfere with it. I've had kids do that in schools. Okay, last chance. Here we go. Very high priority for improved pedestrian safety and access. Okay, anybody in the very low want to comment? Okay. How would you prioritize reduced travel times and greater travel time reliability for all corridor users? I think Philip already explained the difference between time and reliability. Okay, go ahead and vote. Here we go. Very high and some very low. Anybody want to comment on these? Yeah, um, I've never considered um, travel time or um, uh, level of service to be a concern of mine in the city of Portland. Uh, when we built the Portland Peninsula traffic uh, plan 20 plus years ago, uh, one of the things we said is we didn't care about level of service. And, um, that, that's been, uh, we've tried to make that a guiding principle in the city of Portland, and uh, it's, it's not, uh, it's, 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 you're, you're in a city, you can take your time to get from one place to another. You're not on the highway right now. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. If you're a pedestrian, uh, reducing travel time or, or, or having greater liability is sort of a moot point. Okay, good. Yes, sir. I'm skeptical that anything could be done to really reduce the, the reliability or the travel time significantly for how much volume there's likely to be. Did everybody hear that? He's skeptical that there's anything that could be done to reduce the travel time. Thank you. Yes. We have so many goals and objectives to meet that something has to give. Something has to give. Okay. Okay. A couple more questions. How would you prioritize high quality transit service. <laughs> Good point. How would you prioritize transit service? On, on this corridor. On this corridor. Okay, sorry, t your good point. We'll take out the words high quality. Public service? Public transit. Public transit. Public transit. Like Portland Metro. Buses or other? It's a general question. Okay. How would you prioritize transit service on this corridor? Any more votes? Here we go. Pretty split between very high and very low. And a few in the middle. Excuse me? Everybody drives a car. Everybody drives a car. Okay. I, it goes back to one of the other comments about how do we get people out of their cars. But yes, ma'am. No, the trolley. The trolley. Putting back the trolley tracks. I don't know if that. I'm not going to address that. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, I, I would take this back to question two. I, I live pretty much on the commercial street, and as a pedestrian, I don't have any problems. But as a driver, it's unsafe. It's scary. It's horrible. And transit isn't going to get rid of all the pedestrians who are off the cruise ships and off the tour yeah. boats. Okay. So I, I don't. That's why I don't think that's real. Really okay. Thank you. Last comment. Go ahead. Uh, as someone who is a pro-transit advocate, I would say that it should very much be noted that if we build for cars, we get more cars. It's the principle of induced demand. is very well understood by transit planners at this point. So advocating for alternatives is the best way to reduce traffic overall for everyone. Great. Thank you. Last comment, ma'am. But ahead. it doesn't have to be on commercial street. Right. 
somewhere else. Yep, good point. Okay, we're going to move on. How would you prioritize allocating space to bicycle facilities along the corridor? Okay, I'll take out the words high quality. How would you prioritize allocating space to bicycle facilities along the corridor? Go ahead and vote. <laughs> could be a bicycle lane. It could, it could be a bike lane. It could be a separated bike lane, which is using some sort of pain or post-treatment or even uh, there's other, a myriad of treatments, but, but some sort of designated facility where, where cyclists are, have some sort of dedicated right-of-way within the street. Okay. Any more votes? Here we go. Very low priority. Kind of split, too. Okay. Yes, sir. So my question is, is, wouldn't the bicycle users be the ones to answer that question? I mean, most of us don't ride bikes after age 65. Well, it's a question of making space for them, whether or not you're the rider. How is that? How do you prioritize that? Ma'am. Uh, I personally feel that the new traffic pattern for Deering Oaks is extremely confusing for people and I can read signs quite well. I've, I've lived in this area my entire life and it's, it is, it's confusing and it seems very unsafe because a lot of people are, are also confused by that traffic pattern. Even as a regular user, I know where I'm going, but nobody else knows what they're doing through there. <laughs> Park yeah, Park Avenue and through the park itself. Okay. Thank you. This is the last question in this section. Which of these elements would be your highest priority? And I will read them. One, dedicated marine staging and loading areas. Two, improve pedestrian safety and access. Three, reduce travel times, greater travel time reliability for all users. Four, transit service and infrastructure. Five, bicycle facilities. Marine is one, two is pedestrian, three is travel times and reliability, four is transit, and five is bicycles. Good split. The highest is marine staging and loading, and the second highest is transit service followed by pedestrian safety. Okay. So we just want to take about two minutes for discussion. This will be the people that, especially those, the women in the back in the white, go ahead. I have, I have two questions about environmental impacts. One is, did, did you take into consideration at any time the impacts of increasing king tides and sea level rise? And because that's intermittent. As well as my second question, environmentally, um, did you look at snow removal and disruption from major snowstorms and staging of snow? Snow plowing and snow removal was considered in this process. We, we looked at a number of different alternatives and some of those, uh, while they may have had benefits to, to some of the users on the, the previous screen, they were uh, vetted out because they, they might not have been reasonable due to snow removal. As far as the, uh, the sea level rise question, that's something that, that certainly we've, we've thought of and considered. And I think as this process goes forward toward the preferred, al preferred concept phase, I think that's something where that would be uh, considered and how that impacts uh, decisions that are being made. But I think at this point it was made, uh, most of what we've done at this point was a little bit agnostic of that, but it's certainly at the, the front of our minds that it needs to be considered and as that moves forward. Yes, sir. Um, is anything being considered? I see this uh, loading uh, area um, and staging on Commercial Street being a big part of the issue. For a lot of the marine users, that's not really the issue that that we have. We, I need to be able to move equipment in and off of a property, off of Commercial Street, and it doesn't seem like that's being accounted for really at all. Um, you know, there's not a ton of users that need to actively load or unload fisheries related materials, equipment in the middle of Commercial Street. There, there's a few, but really pretty far and few between. But it's, instead, it's getting on and off of Commercial Street itself. Yes, but that doesn't necessarily involve the staging area. I don't need to stage my vehicle. I just need to get to the property. Are you talking? I think that's good feedback. Are you talking about um, on the wharves and piers or on the industrial areas there? On, on the wharves and piers. So I think when we when we move forward, there is some some additional uh, concept elements that that will come to bear that that will note that. But we do appreciate your feedback on on how that's noted. 
On the west end, down towards uh, Holyoke and Deets, we use the uh, area a little bit differently. When we have a short a truck that's not going to be there very long, instead of taking the time back and then shut down Commercial Street, we'll use the staging area for like an operation that's going to take less than 20 minutes to, you know, not just going to prevent the traffic from moving up and down Commercial Street. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Yes. Um, the travel time and reliability, if that problem is solved, doesn't that start to solve some of the other problems? So, I mean, to prioritize one over the other, it seems to me that the traffic is the real issue, the density, along with the pedestrians, bicycles, so on and so forth. So if you're solving traffic issues by times being, you know, driven and all, and the, the amount of traffic, doesn't that start to solve some of the other categories? There, there are some sort of collateral benefits, if you will, um, to the gentleman who mentioned, I think, induced demand. Uh, you know, I don't think we're trying to, to build additional lanes out of this, but, but there's some signal timing improvements and some other more uh, what we would deem like operational improvements that are trying to fix bottlenecks at specific locations. And whether you're, you know, a driver, just you in a car, whether you're driving the trolley, whether you're in a bait truck or anything else, that will have... Uh, benefits to everyone. It's not so much, I think the reliability is, is really probably more of a realistic goal than is the reducing travel time. We're not trying to make Commercial Street I-95 to, I think the Stormont's point, you know, there, there's a reasonable speed and a, re, and, and a limited finite capacity on the corridor and, and we recognize that, but uh, when that capacity is being sort of, if you will, artificially reduced by inefficiencies at signals and, and a lot of how can we manage the friction with some of the other users to make it a little bit better, but not overburden uh, any one user group and, and balance everything. Hope, hope that makes sense. Someone who hasn't spoken yet, sir, in the front. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wanted to say something about the bicycle demand. Um, the neighborhood right above Marshall Street, and so no longer will go down and use Marshall Street off, and then on the flip side, the industry is getting a lot more residents. And so I know a lot of people take cars down, Lyfts or Ubers, to get to where they need to go or whatever, um, or their own personal cars where they can easily bike in such a nice flat ride. Um, but people are not comfortable biking, and all of the uh, proposed um, recommendations are shared. As we know, a lot of people um, Ages of zero and 65 are not comfortable biking. The woman on the right behind her? Yes. I'd like to talk about the, the whole progressive idea about the bicycles, which I think is great. However, I, I live here year round, and as you know, we get a lot of snow. I work down on Commercial Street, and I'd be happy to bike, but I don't think it's something that's really conducive to doing the middle of February. So, you know, I love that concept, but let's be realistic. Thank you. In our industry, we always say you can't have good management without good enforcement. And so uh, it's, it's interesting to see the way that you phrase the questions relative to pedestrians. And I, I do believe that safety is important, but enforcing whatever changes you have is going to be essential because transiting Commercial Street today, I was trying to get down to Union Wharf and there's a red sign up that says don't walk, but 50 people try and cross the street at the same time. So how am I supposed to be able to access a wharf when, I, when, it's, when it's, I'm trying to do the lawful thing and people are not? Thank you. Sir, I don't want to take a Yeah, you asked for discussion the first time, and I just had a general comment. Yes. Uh, with the, um, and it's actually been bolstered by the first round of six questions, and the, there were a lot of oohs and ahs, and there's some surprises, I think in the results. Um, I go back to, I read the two reports that were published online, and I, I see the word solution used in almost every sentence, but there really hasn't been a, an articulate vetting or critical look at what actually is or are the problems. Um, I submit that there are a lot of issues, there are complaints, there are pet peeves, there are inconveniences, Concerns, not all the problems. The one big red flag that I saw was the huge disparity in seasonal spike in pedestrian vis-a-vis -vis, uh, motor vehicles. Is that a problem? I don't know. It's a red flag. 
I'll close by saying this. We're in the hospitality business. I had a conversation this morning, this noon, with a gentleman from Anaheim, California. And uh, he asked, well, what's it like here in the winter? I said, oh, there's no traffic. He said, traffic? He said, he's black. For 10 seconds, he said, you call this traffic? <laughs> Last, Last one in the back. One of the things you may want to consider in your future questioning or discussions, one of the things you may want to consider is what commonality may people be willing to sacrifice in order for them to get the high priority they asked for. One of the things we've all gotten used to is that we think we can travel quickly on Commercial Street, but the reality is there is traffic. It does take time. But if you want safety on Commercial Street for pedestrians and bicyclists, you may want to drive slower. If you want more access to your peers or dwarfs, we may want to provide more space for those individuals and again have traffic slower. So a question may be, would you be willing to have greater travel times with greater time reliability if it meant you got all the other things that you were asking for? Thank you for that discussion. I think that was very helpful and informative. Um, as we move forward here into the real heart of the presentation about what we've been uh, working to develop, I wanted to go over sort of the concept development process. I know Bill noted this when we started off, but want to reiterate that uh, we have three concepts here, uh, but the real end goal from the feedback we're going to get from you tonight, and the feedback we've already gotten, is sort of a best of the best preferred concept. And that doesn't mean that we have to wholesale take everything from concept one or concept two or concept three. If you really like one of those concepts, but you also really like an element for concept two or concept three, uh, the feedback going through this is aimed to, to get to that and, and really isolate and, and bring that forward, not only through the, the polling feedback we're doing here, but through the comment cards and, and some of the, the sticky notes that, that we encourage you to to place up there. So just want to reiterate, we have three concepts. As noted here, they are unique concepts. They are cohesive. They're not just you know random elements strung together. And they were designed in order to get uh, feedback from you that, that's beneficial. But uh, it doesn't mean that we have to pick one of those in isolation sort of in a vacuum. There's ways that we can sort of combine them going forward. Uh, again, we're using your feedback. This was a very iterative process over the last several months. Uh, we looked at, at really dozens of different cross-sections at different points along the corridor. Uh, we broke this out into really three different character areas. I think a few slides ago I sort of noted like an eastern and a western area and how they have sort of a different aesthetic and different interaction. Uh, we looked at, like it shows there, beach to high is, is certainly one area and then Union to Franklin is, is another character and then sort of the middle is that transition zone. And we also looked at different, uh, different studies that had already been completed. One was the Franklin Street Corridor Study, which was helpful for, for looking at Franklin Street. Uh, we also looked at the West Commercial Street Study that was completed recently. And then we looked at the Eastern Waterfront Development uh, Study for, for traffic volumes to help inform not only was, what does traffic look like now or, or last year when we took the volumes, but also going forward when you have the full build out of some of these, uh, some of these different developments that are already underway. So as we move forward, uh, again, I know you guys want to see the concepts. They're, they're in your hands. But uh, I wanted to note again that, that what Bill touched on is important here, is that as we looked at the feedback that you guys provided last fall, as we looked at all the analyses that we'd conducted, field visits, we met and spoke with the city staff, got feedback from the Waterfront and Waterfront Alliance, we, we came to find that in meeting those goals, there were several elements that needed to be included, really regardless of of uh, which concept was going for. We felt they were that important. So I'm going to go through those six different strategies real quick. Uh, one of those is the Beach Street signal improvements. I know that is not Beach Street, but it's, it's on the left side of the page there. Uh, we've, we found that as a quick win that was implemented, I believe, late April, early, early May. Someone in the room can probably tell me exactly the date. But uh, we were looking at how do we try to make those cues a little bit better, those delays a little bit shorter. We know they still exist, but we did uh, do some signal timing improvements to try to modify that. Uh, the next 
uh, common strategy was we felt there needed to be a signal at High Street in the near future in order to not only accommodate the coming development, but also pedestrian safety. This part of the corridor has been less developed. There's less demand to cross Commercial Street, but as that development comes forward, uh, there's likely more of a, a desire to cross. And so having that signal there where you have a protected crossing uh, benefits not only you know, vehicles coming in and out of development, but also the, the pedestrians that are crossing there. The next element was signal timing and coordination. Uh, I'm sure you guys have driven, driven along the corridor, especially at Center and Union Street, and maybe stopped at Center Street, and then you have the privilege of stopping again at, at Union Street. So we're trying to, to uh, make not only each signal a little bit more efficient, but make them talk to each other a little bit more. In, in traffic engineering lingo, it's sort of like a, a progression or a wave as you go down the corridor. How do you, how do you make that happen? And, one way of doing that is actually recognizing, as folks have said, that sometimes traffic moves pretty slowly during key points. So instead of assuming that traffic's going to move at 30 miles an hour, you may need to assume that it's going to move slower and those signals are coordinated to that slower speed. So there are a number of ways you can look at that. Fourth element, I think it was touched on a little bit, is a shared use path uh, from roughly Beach Street, continuing from, from bicycle and other infrastructure elements further west up to High Street, that would be widening the existing uh, sidewalk that sort of runs through Harvard View Park there and uh, provide additional width for uh, cyclists and pedestrians up to High Street. Next element is better defining and sort of delineating the marine and staging loading areas as shown in blue here. Uh, one is in the area that we've talked a lot about already, which is uh, from roughly the bridge to Park Street, High Street. Uh, we know there's a lot of staging and loading activity there already, but um, how do we make sure that that's managed and delineated, ordered a little bit better? That may be uh, paint, you know, pavement markings in the roadway. It may be at certain locations, simply bollards, trying to um, just denote where vehicles are going to park. We know there's different businesses there. We know they have employees and customers that park there. So we know that managing that and finding an organized way that that works for everyone is a challenge, but we feel like um, some, some additional markings and you know, ways to denote that would, would, benefit, would benefit everyone. And then the next one is a wider wharf sidewalk from uh, Union Street to Franklin Street. We know, especially during peak season, there's a lot of pedestrians on this corridor. You get a cruise ship, you get ferries, you get everybody coming in. And, um, we, we looked at both sidewalks and felt that the wharf side sidewalk at, at most locations in this area was about four to five feet narrower. And so not only do you need wider sidewalk just to, to walk by each other, but also if somebody's stopping to window shop or eat an ice cream cone or whatever you know, people are doing along the corridor, you want to have enough space for them to do that and have people walk by comfortably so they're not getting, you know, there's not crowding and people aren't spilling into the street, which then becomes even more of a safety issue. So. These are the six strategies common to all of the concepts. Um, it, we, again, we felt that these were important to convey, important based on the goals, based on your feedback, based on the analysis that we had conducted. So we're going to move on to the concepts now. You guys should have all of these in your hand. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and put this up. I have that in front of me, and I can speak through this just so you have it a little more visually. Um, I'm sure you guys have... I've probably already recognized this. Beach Street is that way. Franklin Street is basically at my right hand right here. And so this is a replicated and exaggerated version of what's up here. It's about a mile long corridor. So um, if, if we were to only show this, you can see how difficult it would be to see some of the different elements that are going on up here. So, uh, you know, this is showing what looks like could be like a hundred foot wide sidewalk. We're not proposing that. It's just exaggerated to make it easier for everyone to see. And that's what's shown on on the pages you have with you and on the, uh, the 36 by 48s printed around the room as well. So uh, this is concept one. The theme of concept one is travel time and travel time reliability. Uh, there's four main bullets to this. The first one is reducing travel times and improving the reliability. Uh, there's again, again, marine and active waterfront access, designated uh, and time restricted commercial delivery zones, which I'll get into, and then uh, on from High Street to Franklin Street, we do propose putting uh, sharrows down to improve cyclist awareness. So going back to the first bullet, uh, the first way that we would propose to improve uh, travel time reliability is we would limit where center turn lane loading could occur. We know that right now, 
Uh, there's a lot of places where the center turn lane is used for loading, and that creates a couple of different issues. One, vehicles can't use it to actually stage and queue to turn, so sometimes they have to wait in the through lane, which blocks everyone. Another issue with that is from a safety perspective, uh, if the vehicle's especially close to the crosswalk, it's difficult for pedestrians crossing to see or turning vehicles from the side street to see. So uh, there's a number of benefits by limiting that to the extent possible. Uh, we're proposing in this scenario to only allow it between Union and Dana Street, which is essentially the longest block in this sort of eastern half of the corridor. And we would use paint and potentially bollards to denote where those delivery vehicles are allowed to uh, stop and, and park and then they would make their delivery. And so it would either be bollards or paint. It would be set back at least 50 feet from any crosswalk so that you'd have additional visibility there and, and have that. Another element would be that we would propose to remove the uh, Custom House Street and Market Street crosswalks. Uh, we know there's a lot of crosswalks in this area. We also very much value pedestrian safety, but I believe between Franklin Street and Union Street, depending on how you count them, there's anywhere between 11 and 13 different crosswalks. And so uh, we felt that these two crosswalks could be removed and it would not be overly onerous to anyone needing to walk to an adjacent crosswalk to cross. If you remove those, um, you're allowing a little bit more continuity and reliability along the corridor. Uh, to someone's point, enforcement is obviously important to uh, where, where pedestrians are crossing. And, and to that, you know, we would want to make sure that at those remaining crossings that there is good sight distance and visibility. You, you may need to preclude parking right next to that where there is parking now. You may need to remove a space in order to better see uh, if, if you're about to cross there, especially if you're a child, it's difficult to see over some of those cars. But we would propose to remove those two crosswalks. And then this uh, concept also proposes mixed-use transit service. So there's no dedicated lane, but there would be transit service along the corridor. Uh, you can see bus stops here. There's bus stops near Franklin Street, uh, near roughly Union and Cross Street, and then down closer to High Street. And uh, these, these buses would operate in mixed traffic. And when at bus stops, parking would be removed and the buses would pull out, use that parking and pick up and drop off. And, and that way, uh, when the bus is stopping, it would, not, uh, it would not impede the flow of traffic around the bus. So, and then when the bus merges back in, it would, it would just pull back into traffic. So all three of those elements are, are aimed at improving travel time and travel time reliability. Uh, Part of that transit access is travel time, not necessarily for drivers, but for, for other folks using the corridor. Uh, for the marine active waterfront and the, that industry, we're proposing, if you see on the far right over here, um, in pink it says, hang tag parking for marine industry employees. We know that parking demand is a concern on this corridor, so we would be taking basically parallel parking from roughly the Casco Bay Bridge to Park Street and that would be dedicated to a uh, certain industry and you would have a, you know, a hang tag that you would put in your car and that would allow you to park in that area. And then at Pearl Street, uh, Pearl Street we're proposing uh, having flagging operations when there's bait trucks backing down Custom House Wharf. We know that's difficult for some folks to see, so there would be um, you know, very visible fluorescent neon flags that uh, the operators of that uh, operation associated with the truck could use and to make sure that folks approaching the intersection, whether it's drivers, whether it's pedestrians, are able to clearly see that a, a unique movement is about to occur as, as they back down uh, in that intersection and then back down the wharf. For commercial delivery and loading, I've already mentioned that we would be limiting center turn lane loading to just one specific area along the corridor. Uh, and then we would also have a few places along the wharf side sort of with parallel parking. But because we're limiting it, we're proposing that additional deliveries would need to be made on uh, Pearl Street, Market Street, and Union Street. And those would be uh, where vehicles could also pull in. Those locations were selected uh, for a couple reasons, but perhaps the, the, most pr the highest priority was the fact that they, they aren't paved with cobbles and if you're pushing a handcart, it's pretty difficult to push a, a hand car on a cobbled paving. So um, that's that improvement. And then like we mentioned, the, uh, the Sharrows for greater cyclist awareness from High Street down to Franklin Street. So those are all the 
elements of concept one that are unique to concept one. I know uh, that was a lot to go through. We're gonna keep going. We're gonna have time to discuss all of these after, uh, after we've made it through all, all the concepts. Moving on to concept two. Uh, the theme of concept two is improving the efficiency for the working waterfront. Another element that you saw from concept one is that there would be hang tag par parking for marine employees sort of along the parallel area from Casco Bay Bridge to Park Street. Uh, there would be a little bit more allowance of deliveries in the center median, and there's some, some sort of collateral benefits of that. Uh, we would again have it from Union to Dana Street and also near Market Street because we're proposing to remove uh, that crosswalk so that allows you to, to deliver in the middle of the street uh, without having the same concerns. We would also allow more deliveries along the, uh, the wharf side of Commercial Street. Uh, I know we showed delivery here at Market Street. The hope would, that it was, would be that it could all be contained uh, within Commercial Street there. And what that allows for when there's no transit service on this corridor, which we're proposing in this concept, no transit service, is that you have more of the parking, more of the curbside uh, that's retained for business owners, retained for uh, employees, for customers, needing to use that parking, and it also offers the most flexibility in terms of the use of the curbside. I know folks have mentioned um, there's a lot of different competing uses on this corridor in terms of curb space. Um, you know, late at night, there's, there's now, I think someone mentioned Uber and Lyft picking up and dropping off, so how do you create a safe space along the curbside for everyone to use that? And then another element for safety, for pedestrian safety in this corridor is that at Pearl Street, there would be a flashing beacon. I think you guys are familiar with the existing beacon down near High Street right now. Um, Pearl Street has some of the highest pedestrian crossing volumes on the corridor, and in order to make uh, that traffic control more visible, in order to improve uh, the comfort of crossing Commercial Street there, we propose to put in another flashing beacon at this location. Just wanted to reiterate with the, the deliveries here on Commercial Street, those would again be denoted by pavement markings or some sort of bollard to make sure that they are uh, protected from, or that they're demarcated specifically and that, uh, that they're sort of housed within a certain zone there. Moving on to the third concept, the theme of this concept is multimodal accessibility. Uh, this one has perhaps the most unique element along the corridor. Uh, you may have noticed that uh, this sort of gold yellow bar down the middle is actually proposing to dedicate the center turn lane to transit service. So instead of having a center turn lane that would be allowed, you know, be used by uh, vehicles to, to stage in and then turn, uh, it would be used by transit service. That transit service could be a bus driven by a person, which we're all familiar with. Uh, going forward, it could actually be a potential autonomous uh, shuttle or bus of some sort. Uh, those have been implemented in, in several cities around the country in, in sort of a limited basis. So going forward, there's the potential that they may be able to operate in a more complex setting, obviously like Commercial Street. Another component of that transit service is that it would have what's called transit signal priority. Uh, what that means is as that transit vehicle approaches a signal, it has some sort of device on the, on the vehicle, whether it's uh, some sort of strobe, it can be a radio signal, it can actually use GPS, but there's a number of different ways, and as it approaches signals, it sort of talks to the signal, and the signal says, hey, there's a bus coming, and then uh, it, it changes to give green time to that signal more quickly uh, in order to expedite transit service along the, the corridor. And uh, bus stops would actually be in the middle of the corridor, so it would be like a, a little island in the middle. There would be a safe crossing to that uh, provided by um, a pedestrian signal to cross to that median, and then that's where buses would pick up in the middle. One, one question you may have is this is only one lane. It's one center median lane. How do you have transit service go in both directions? Uh, what you see here in the middle is where it's shown to be schematically drawn a little bit wider, that would be a passing section. Um, so you have one lane here where vehicles are traveling in, in both directions. You have a center passing lane where you, you use technology, you use signal timing so that when the vehicle gets there, it waits until it gets to the two-lane section, it passes the other vehicle, and then it goes on. 
Um, as far as the transit alignment for this, I'm sure many of you are wondering what that would be. Uh, that is still to be determined. This could continue down West Commercial Street. It could turn up High Street and go into the heart of, of downtown. You know, what it does east of Franklin Street is also up in the air, but the idea is that you would dedicate part of Commercial Street to having that high quality transit service. I know several of you have mentioned how do we reduce the demand for vehicles on Commercial Street. So this is one way that you can do that where if you're in that transit vehicle, you have um, a prioritized access along the corridor. You're traveling at least as fast, if not faster, than, than other folks on the corridor and it makes it a little bit more appealing. Another element of this multimodal concept is uh, we would propose to have separated bike lanes from, uh, you see at High Street where the shared use path ends to Union Street. So you'd be able to get from, from Beach Street and points west of there all the way to Union Street on a uh, shared use path or a more separated bike facility. If you wanted to continue as a cyclist, you would use the signal at Union Street uh, with appropriate cyclist design to continue and then head east that way and there would be sharrows marked along uh, Commercial Street going, going towards uh, Franklin Street. And then as far as pedestrian safety, we would propose to fully signalize Pearl Street in this scenario, or in this, this concept, excuse me. And so with that, provides a number of different benefits. One is that, again, there's incredible pedestrian demand at Pearl Street during peak season. Having a full signal there provides protected crossings for pedestrians. Another benefit is that when bait trucks are backing down Commercial Street, you could actually outfit um, a sense, or an emitter, some sort of communication device on those bait trucks, when they approach here and when they're baking their, their backing movement, they can actually stop the signal, make it red for everyone so it's safe to back down there. And then the third benefit is once you have transit or if you had transit on this corridor, it's another signal to give transit priority to folks on the bus and to, uh, to better communicate with that median running transit. So another, another key element is the full signal at Pearl Street. As far as deliveries on this corridor, because the center turn lane is precluded from, from allowing deliveries, you obviously have to accommodate them in some other way. So they would be accommodated at certain locations on the wharf side and parallel parking, and they would also be accommodated um, on adjacent streets, Union, Market, and, and Pearl Street is, again, the streets that we've outlined. Uh, we will get into this a little bit later, but for all of these delivery locations, we're recommending that deliveries be time restricted. So, so say you had a delivery location here, we would, we would work with adjacent business owners and say, when do most of your deliveries occur? In cities around the country that have done this, it's typically earlier in the morning, 5 to 10 a.m., 6 to 11 a.m. And so when it's not that time, this could be used for parking, it could be used for some other use. But when it is that time, it would be restricted only to commercial delivery activity. And then, you know, they would have to either pay the meter or, or have some sort of other transaction in order to use that space, just like any other parked vehicle would at any other hour. So um, that is concept three. I know you guys are patient or patiently waiting, I'm sure, to offer some, uh, some feedback on this. I have one more slide and then we can, we can sort of get to that. We have a concept evaluation matrix that looks at seven different criteria. Uh, you guys have this on the back of your concept layout, so if you can't read this, it's right in front of you, don't worry. Uh, we went through seven different categories. This was, this was our evaluation of this, but obviously we're here to get your feedback and, and we are very appreciative of the, of the feedback that you're providing, but we, we looked at these across these seven categories, concepts one, two, and three, and sort of, if you're familiar with the uh, Consumer Reports magazine, uh, the red circle means that it would significantly worsen versus existing, a open circle, sort of neutral, and then green filled means it significantly improves. So we, we go through, and it, I'm not gonna go through all 21 of these boxes, but you can see on concept one, we're looking and it says, you know, this would improve safety and travel time reliability. We're estimating marine and wharf access, ease of delivery for concept two, and then cycling and transit options for concept three. Shared use, shared use path on the, on here. Are you referring to a larger sidewalk or are you referring to something beyond the sidewalk? You would be proposing to widen that sidewalk um, from roughly 
High Street toward, back toward Beach Street, widening in toward this. This green right here is a um, separated bike lane, so it would be the curb and then bike lanes and then parking, protected by parking. The shared use path, I'm, I'm sorry, we could have, this, this should say separated bike lane. If you look at the shared use path and then sort of where those vertical bars are, that's where it would transition to the separated bike lane on the, the right half of where that green line is. Lots of questions, I'm sure. Yes, sir. Yeah, um, this is a common on concept three, uh, delivery. <clears throat> From Union Wharf to our, our Franklin, Ontario, uh, you, you made a comment about when the deliveries are done, uh, done most, it's all day. All day. From early in the morning to late in the afternoon, uh, tractor trailers, straight jobs, UPS, FedEx, I mean, it's, it's just, there is no ebb and flow. It's, it's constant. So, if you're going to try and set a parameter around time, it's going to be I mean, I can't even imagine fighting between all these delivery vehicles trying to find a spot to deliver. And Pearl Street, by the way, I think you mentioned in the previous concept as a possible location, uh, there's a good portion of the day when there are uh, tour buses staging there, stuck boats, and other vehicles. I mean, I, I just I don't see how that can handle all the flow. Appreciate the feedback. Sorry. Just a um, couple comments. Uh, for, to go to the next slide. Uh, yeah. I mean, well, first, I'd like to um, say I strongly recommend you never recommend or never spec flashing yellow beacons. They're even more dangerous than uh, than nothing. Um, murderous tenter. Well, I won't go into why. Uh, for these two red spots, it says loss of parking, but then theoretically there would be less demand. And then likewise, it says increased tra travel time, but then the whole thing is to make the transit go faster. So wouldn't that increase travel time? There would be a loss of parking, yes, but the hope would be that there would be reduced demand for it. So I appreciate you noting that as far as the travel time and reliability. Um, so the transit service has the, the filled green for significantly improves uh, for, for most other motorized vehicle users because you can't use that center turn lane for, for turning left. You'd have to turn left from the through lane. Uh, we did want to point out that it would likely increase travel times for those not on the transit vehicle. But I think your, your point is valid that it is improving service for those taking the transit, you know, transit service wherever it would be scheduled throughout Portland. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Um, quick question for you. I think the biggest challenge we have is Commercial Street was really designed for commercial and distribution activities, and now we've got the influx to up to 1,400%, I think your stat said, increase in pedestrian walking during that high season. Where they're all going up Pearl Street, obviously, to get to Old Port and some of the shops. Uh, was there, I'm sorry if I missed the first 20% of this, um, studies of being able to take that transit across 4th Street or Middle Street of somehow getting it off of commercial? Because you look at places like Vancouver <coughs> that has the same issues where you have a lot of commercial activity, you have a lot of pedestrian activity, and they take all the pedestrians coming from the cruises and they get them away from the commercial activity. Did you repeat your question one more time? Did, it, did you study, I feel like, is there a possibility of having a transit service that doesn't take commercial streets? This, this study is focused specifically on commercial streets, so in, in the context of that, we looked at the transit service on this corridor. I know, um, Bruce or Bill, if you want to speak to anything else that, that Metro is doing, I know that, that Metro is evaluating, I'm sure, other routes in, in more of a holistic context in Portland. But um, your, your point about the fact that adjacent transit service could also potentially serve this corridor was something that we have talked about at different points throughout the, the planning process. 
So, uh, this process is looking, if there were transit service on the corridor, how would it be accommodated? It is not a service design process. Metro is looking at a Route 8 redesign. There are uh, other processes looking at transit in the area. So it's not a foregone conclusion that transit would go here, but if it were to go here, or if Commercial Street were selected to be a transit priority corridor, these are the concepts of how it could be accommodated. Spill. So, I just want to comment on the safety aspect. There's a little bit that addresses um, speed of vehicles, which I think is a key safety issue for everyone. And, um, and I'm a full-time bicycle commuter, and I would say that the biggest thing you can do to improve bicycle access and safety is to improve pedestrian access and safety. And I think that elements that can reduce the speed of vehicles when there isn't a lot of traffic, it's something that you should consider. Is there, is there a specific part of the corridor you're referencing, or when the traffic's low, just the whole, whole extent of Commercial Street we're looking at? I think probably the whole thing, but especially the more uh, dense areas. Thank you. The back, sir. Well, if I could just take a second, I'd like to mention a, an alternative that hasn't been considered here. It's in response to uh, what Tony asked earlier about getting cars, more cars out of the city so there's less congestion and stuff. So I started uh, last year looking at a project called Microrail, which is intended to pull about 10,000 out of the 35,000 cars that come into the city and pull them and park them outside off the peninsula. And uh, I would encourage people to take a look at Microrail and see if that isn't a, a solution that works for you better than than just changing uh, crossing guard uh, lanes and uh, uh, lights. The idea is to get cars off the off the road so that pedestrians and bikes and other people you know can work safely without all that and and not have the competition between cars and, and humans. Thank you very much, sir. I have concerns about the delivery uh, area on Pearl and Market Street. Kind of to be able to get the bait trucks up the road, the tractor trailer trucks, and the split axles and back down will work. And also the uh, area to the west across Commercial Street on the land side of Commercial Street, we did hang pay parking. The split axle tractor trailers use that median over there to be able to swing the tractor in to get into those wharfs that have to be entered perpendicular to Commercial Street. Thank you. Yes, sir. I wonder if you could give me some clarification on delivery. Deliveries in concept one and two. I'm not sure where the proposal, those two concepts, would allow trucks to be parked when they make noise. You're talking about general deliveries, UPS, FedEx, beer trucks, that kind of stuff. So we do have a designated area between Union and Dana Street denoted, and then there's these purple areas here. Uh, one is just west of Moulton, one is uh, right near Custom House Street, and then uh, we have noted these three on adjacent streets. We acknowledge the feedback we've gotten that, that we may need to revisit that further, but, but those are where we've selected, at least for, for this concept, for the uh, general deliveries to potentially occur. And, and I know we've talked about potentially time restricting them. I know we got feedback that they're occurring uh, throughout the day. There may be additional ways to look at you have more of them time restricted and then you have at, at a certain time of day when they're a little bit less, you could have fewer of these time restricted. There's, there's ways to, to look at that, but concept two. So concept two, we expand uh, where in the center median and where on the curbside, these purple areas where we're proposing deliveries, uh, we still show one on Market Street just in case there's a little bit of sort of spillover, but the goal would be to contain all the deliveries on uh, Commercial Street and then uh, whether it's on the center median or on the, the curbside on the wharf there. So the, the median for deliveries is limited to, uh, I can't read this. It's, it's Union to Dana and then basically just east of uh, Market Street and the crosswalk at Market Street would be removed and so removing that crosswalk allows you to more safely stage that delivery because you're not 
blocking any pedestrian visibility. Yes, Bill. If I could clarify that those delivery areas would also be available just for truck staging that's waiting to get on to a pier as the center median is currently used. So this concept too for working waterfront access would retain that option in the center median and potentially also in these uh, sideline areas. Uh, but a uh, question, and it's relative to Mike's comment about um, deliveries. There are a lot of waterfront or uh, commercial street businesses here, or those adjacent uh, to commercial street, but there are a lot that aren't. And in terms of uh, outreach, in terms of notification of this meeting, um, how is that done? Because I just worry that, you know, there's 60 some odd people here tonight, but there uh, are a lot of people who aren't here. So, uh Thank you, Mayor, uh, Council Mavidonis. The uh, list that we originally developed will utilize uh, a waterfront uh, list that I had, a uh, waterfront alliance list. We've also included representation to the chamber and to the PD. We did not send to the entire PD board, but obviously we sent to PD, uh, looking for them to extend outreach as well. I'm not sure if it went to every single member of their um, of, of their uh, constituency. Uh, but we had about um, 280 people on our uh, just initial contact in addition to the press uh, that went out uh, in advance. A couple more questions and then we'll move on. So someone who hasn't spoken yet, anyone? Yes, I like make, make reference to the wider sidewalk on the Waterfront side. I don't. I, I. I think you'd end up with a little bit more roadkill uh, for the pedestrians. You're going to have trucks backing in out of the wash, and you're bringing in equipment, and you're bringing in bait. That'd be something more for people to, the truck drivers, to have to avoid. Not all walks have a light at the end of it, so it's going to make it that much harder to come off the walk to get onto Commercial Street. Also, I'd like to address the light you're talking about down there at High Street. I don't know why you don't take High Street and uh, just make it one way up. Uh, you add a light to Commercial Street, you're just going to slow down the traffic. Okay, thank you. Okay, burning questions that we absolutely have to say. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, I like the, uh, the, the creative thinking that you apparently put into the whole delivery and settlement uh, concept. How you can move it back and forth. To the extent there are downside issues, uh, that stem from that, that issue or problem, uh, you have to also consider what potential downside or unintended consequences there might be. I'll give you an example of one. In the morning, trucks can park down on the wharves or in our restaurant parking lot before we have any customers, and uh, they're fine. But if they can't there, if they're forced by constrained access on the center line, to go down there and camp and then deliver to five or six different establishments, uh, you're creating another problem. Just something to think. Thank you. And hey, one more. This gentleman in the back, I can introduce you. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I see uh, on plans one and three, um, there's uh, the loadings on, on Union, uh, Union Street um, and also on uh, Pearl Street. This will pretty negatively impact our ability on Union Warren uh, to back tractor trailers onto the wharf. Uh, also, at Custom House, that's going to be an issue as well. But uh, especially on Union Street, there isn't any more width to go out. The road's narrow as it is. You start putting a delivery zone there, it's going to create chaos. And, you know, we, we don't have an insanely high volume of tractor trailers backing across, but they're there every day. It, it happens all day, every day. Uh, and also, where is this new wider sidewalk coming from? Because in the picture, it looks like you guys are taking part of, uh, you know, in front of Sapporo's, for example, Sapporo's abuts the sidewalk. So are we getting the sawzall out and cutting some of the building back, or are we narrowing commercial street up? It would, it would be widening into the street was the, was the thought there. Uh, w one follow-up on your, on your question, sir, on, on the deliveries on Union and Pearl, if, if those delivery zones were located a little bit further up the street, would that, would that be less of an issue if they weren't right at the intersection? Yeah, so you're also, when you do that, you're pushing them further away. And, and for example, like, I mean, we have 
FedEx, UPS, everybody out in front of our sure. area trying to deliver everything, which is a nuisance, but if you can't let them deliver, if you restrict the amount of space that you're going to allow vehicles to deliver on in the center media, I mean, I don't know if you drive down there Friday mornings, 10 o'clock, you know, any normal day when the stuff's open, it's trucks the whole way. I mean, if you, if you restrict this to essentially three tractor trailer lengths in each section, um, you're going to push a lot of that onto the, the wharfs, and you know we we can't really handle it. How, how are the wharf owners supposed to handle this when you push deliveries that are coming from the street now and pushing them onto the wharfs? Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Okay. We want to get some more voting feedback from you, and I also want to mention that if you have to leave before we end, we're going to try to get out of here by 8:30. Um, please leave your keypad and also your white feedback form with us. So um, don't leave without turning those in if you can. So these are the issues that we would like your keypad polling feedback on. One will be the center median. Two will be how is the curb space used. Three will be the transit service preference. Four is the general delivery location. And five is parking. We have, we have two screens going here. I know that one is smaller and a little bit dimmer than the, the big one up here, but uh, we wanted to, we're looking at sort of each concept element a little bit more in depth now. When we voted before, it was sort of at the 50,000 foot level. Now that you've seen the concepts, uh, you've seen us or heard us talk about some of these a little bit more, we want to we wanted get your feedback on some of these individual elements. So. Uh, this question is, what is the best option for the use of the center median? We know there's a lot of nuance here. We've heard really great feedback from each of you on this. Um, but, but if at a, at a sort of, you know, not 50,000 foot level, but a little bit more detailed level, how would you, uh, what would you see as the best option for the use of the center median there? And so we have them described a little bit over there. Um, Again, reserved for traffic options, that's basically somewhat what it is now when it's not being blocked by center deliveries. Do you want to delineate even more of it or maintain a, a good portion being, deliver, uh, being demarked for uh, delivery zones? Or the third option, which corresponds to concept three, the, uh, the dedicated bi-directional transit use? Oh, none of the above. <laughs> <laughs> that's not an option tonight. Medium. Okay, any clarification questions? You can see the, the uh, photos on the far left that describe each of these. Vote one if it is to reserve for traffic operations like left turns. Two for safely delineated delivery zones. Three for bi-directional dedicated transit service. So go ahead and vote. Oh yes, ma'am. So would one reserve for traffic operations, would that also fail like as it is now? Deliveries and it also turns up. Or it would one would be waiting into base waiting it to basically say we're trying to preserve as much of the center median for only vehicles using it as a as a turn lane and not delivery. Two would be more say so you believe it should be noted more for just I think it's um, in your evaluation sheet that, that on the back side, it does say that for like number one, that has the travel time, the biggest travel time savings of 10 to 20%, I believe. And number two, if it were um, that travel time savings goes down, but there's still a benefit. And in number three, for the bi-directional bus, there's a travel time deficit. It gets, uh, the travel time gets a little worse. So I think that helps to frame it. Okay, go ahead and vote. Delivery zones. Okay. So I'm going to leave this up for a minute just so you can explain sure. it. I'll explain it here. Uh, so the curb space, curb is, I'm sure we're all familiar with, but you know, curb is on the edge of the street. Say it again. Um, and as we, as we move forward, we want to evaluate how can the curb side be best allocated. And so if we go to the left there, one is, is allocating some of it for pulling bus stops. That, that's not to say the entire corridor would be bus stops. That would be a lot of bus stops. But, but do you feel strongly that, it should be dedic that some of the curb space should be dedicated to that? Second is commercial delivery zones, dedicating it, whether it's time restricted or not. We understand there's a lot of deliveries all day, but 
dedicating some of that to commercial deliveries. And then third is basically not allowing either of those and saying we need employee, we need customer, we need other parking, and trying to reserve that for, for parking, whether it's with hang tags for something industry specific or whether it's general parking. Um, what would your priority be in that manner? question is, what is your highest priority for the use of that curb space? One is bus stops, two is time-restricted deliveries to free up the center turn lane and better manage curb space, and three is to maximize parking. Go ahead and vote. Pretty close, uh, but the highest priority is 39% for the time-restricted deliveries to free up the center turn lane and better manage curb space. So transit service alternatives, uh, when we presented concept one, we showed mixed lane transit service with pull-out bus stops. Uh, you, obviously, this is a metro bus. This is Congress Street near Center Street. An example of parking is disallowed in this area. A bus can pull in. Um, it doesn't block traffic while it's allowing passengers to board and alight, then it merges back into traffic. Uh, this is a photo from Eugene, Oregon. Um, it is one of the best examples of having a single lane of dedicated transit that operates in both directions. Um, this, is, this is perhaps a, the, the best image in the country we could get to, to show how this uh, works. We know that Eugene is not Portland. Every city is unique, so we're not trying to, to make that characterization, but they are similarly sized towns. Uh, this bus service operates most of the way on a single lane, and then where it, it needs to pass, it has a two-lane section. So uh, this is one way to visualize sort of how that can look. This, this center area here is the, the turn lane, and then uh, further in either direction, there's, there's those passing zones where you have a two-lane segment and, and buses can pass each other. So you're either having the mixed-use transit or uh, dedicating the facility. So I'll go ahead. So the question is, which is the best option for transit service along the corridor? Mixed use with inline bus stops and transit signal priority, a dedicated transit facility with signal priority, or three, no need for transit service on Commercial Street? No need for transit service along the corridor. Okay, general delivery. So we've, we've already found, I think, in, in the first two questions of this series that, that you guys prioritize uh, delivery, delivery space quite a bit, but uh, this is where should deliveries occur. Uh, the left shows an existing delivery on Commercial Street. Below that shows how you could use pavement markings to specify where those deliveries could occur. You could also use bollards um, to, to further denote that, but bollards as uh, someone pointed out, snow removal is a concern, so you'd, you'd maybe need to remove the bollards during winter, but all that aside, that's one way you could de designate it. This is the curbside uh, near Franklin Street, just as an example. It doesn't have to be there. This is an adjacent street on Union. Again, just as an example, we've heard plenty of feedback that, that we may need to uh, evaluate that a little further, but uh, just where specifically uh, should those general deliveries occur? The question is, which is the best option for general deliveries? One, center turn lane set back from intersections. Two, time restricted at designated curbside locations such as early in the morning, 6 to 10 a.m. or something like that. And three, is time restricted on adjacent streets? Yeah, why, does, why, why are you making it time restricted on the curbside locations? Our understanding that uh, we look to best practices from other cities and they had all had early early morning. We appreciate the feedback that you guys have gotten that that may, to be, may need to be extended uh, throughout the day. There's a lot of deliveries, so we may have uh, mis misjudged the, the volume of those deliveries somewhat, but that was just in order to balance if you have, say, say 30 feet of curb space, you know, from 6 to 10 a.m., it could only be dedicated to one use, and then later in the day, it can still be parking, which allows you to sort of double dip your use there a little bit. Yes, sir? Have you looked at the, um, a lot of talk about bait trucks. Have you looked at the uh, ratio of bait trucks going in and seafood coming out? I don't think we've done a, a freight analysis of that type specifically if, for if this. If it's less than one to one, might we just eat the bait? It's also, it's also an issue of lobsters coming off of those piers, especially, and 
Uh, say that again on the issue of... We're, we're also buying lobster off of a number of these piers. So everything from a 53-foot reefer to a box truck needs to be able to access those piers. Okay, thank you. So go ahead and vote. Center turn lane, set back from intersections. Okay. All right, I think this is the last one. I uh, appreciate your, your participation. So this is looking at projects or different policies to increase or manage parking capacity. So uh, this is something we haven't maybe touched on in specificity as much uh, tonight, but looking on the far left there, either adding structured parking, which is a significant cost, or looking to coordinate to reprice existing parking. We found when looking at some of the other studies done uh, along not only this corridor, but in the general area. I believe there was a 2016 parking study done. Uh, one of the findings from that was that on-street parking along the curbside and off-street parking in some of these lots is priced very differently. And because the off-street parking is so much more expensive, uh, folks spend a lot of time circling around looking for some of that cheaper parking. If you can find a way to better balance that parking, either by lowering the off-street parking a little bit or at certain times of year, times of day, potentially, um, you know, repricing the, the on-street parking, you may be able to get that. But for, for this specific voting, the, the left option is either adding that structured parking or, or repricing the existing. Uh, the middle option is pricing parking for increased turnover. So typically the higher you price on-street parking, the more turnover occurs there. If, if it's higher, people aren't going to wait as long when they're when they're parked there because it's more expensive. And while that cost is obviously something to consider, when you have that additional turnover, you can price it in such a way that makes sure that there's usually, say, one space or two spaces almost always available on a given block. And when you do that, um, it means there's less circling. It contributes to, to less traffic, especially when you have out-of-town visitors who may not know where to park. They just got in. They've never been to Portland before. Um, so there's, there's ways to manage that parking um, at, at different times. And then the third is uh, looking to industry-specific hang tag parking. Uh, we, we have noted this for the marine industry, but you could apply it to a number of different specific user groups. Yes, ma'am. The city has parking permit districts, and Commercial Street is not currently in any of them. You know, if you live on Montevideo District 1 and so forth. Um, I happen to live in that area where there's no district, and I bought a parking permit for the Commercial Street and the Old And there are currently only seven spaces in the, in the whole entire district that are open, and they're usually taken by people trying to avoid the meters. So I'm wondering whether or not, if you were talking about that, it might become part of the people who have legal district two parking permits. For, for this third option? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it, would that be possible if you were the same permit permit? I don't, I don't want to speak out of turn, but I, I mean, in theory, it is, it is possible, but I will let Bruce and Bill and others, if they want to weigh in on, on that note, but um, certainly you can have permits in that way, and that would be one way. So okay. So this question is, what is the best option to maintain or increase parking capacity and availability? One, manage parking pricing and duration along Commercial Street to increase turnover. Two, add structured off-street parking near Commercial Street. Three, employee hand tag, hang tag parking in dedicated parking spaces. Yeah, I've got a question. Everything you've done is decreased parking along Commercial Street by your redoing it. And now you're wanting to make more parking available? You know, I, I, I work on the waterfront. I have help. And... Uh, you're driving us away. Another comment? Yes, sir. Um, what is the, the I, I'm, I'm assuming the structured off-street parking is something the city would build. And what is the value of, <laughs> maybe not. What, what is the, the cost benefit of having the city build a parking structure as opposed to having a city sell a parking lot and, and have it developed into condominiums or something like that. I, there's a trade-off. The city has a, a, a conflict of interest here in that they make a fortune off parking, but that also takes real estate off the tax roll. So 
there's an economic factor about structured parking. There's a lot to, to unpack in that, in that comment, but um, <laughs> land, land can be... More taxes if you have a structured parking. There's, there's a lot of different possibilities to use that off-street parking. I think for this question, we're just looking at, at the preferred way to try to manage manage that parking and, and increase the, the availability of it at different times. <laughs> Thank you for everybody for really engaging in these questions. I think that when we give the answers, really think about you know, use of the corridor, because that's the key to what we're evaluating right now. So if we think about how we're using the corridor or how we might provide an alternative for that, there's no perfect question that's going to capture all of that. And I think you're, you're wrestling with it. It just helps exemplify the complexity of these issues. But when you answer these questions, just think about the corridor specifically because that's what's going to inform this particular study. Any more votes? Add structured off-street parking near Commercial Street. Okay. So we have a few more minutes. Uh, just if there's any more comments that haven't been made that you want us to know, we also want to give you the opportunity to get up, stretch your feet, you've been sitting for a long time, and make, go to any of these charts, they're all the same around the room, and leave a sticky note with your comments. Sir, hold on. We kind of got hung up on add structure parking. Yeah. It didn't say that the city was going to add structure. That's true. That's true. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Yes, ma'am. Hold on, folks. <laughs> Great, thank you. Any other comments that haven't been made? And also, please leave us sticky notes if you'd like. So just a quick uh, thank you for your feedback and also what's happening next. Uh, next steps, just to keep you guys informed, really appreciate your feedback tonight, multiple ways you've given it. Uh, we're going to use that feedback to identify a preferred concept. Again, we're not looking at just one or just two or just three. We're going to combine those elements that seem to have risen to the top and, and try to create a preferred alternative out of that. And then from that, there will be a recommendations report that will provide additional detail uh, for other future items based on the vision for this corridor.